Today, we will be learning how to model division as the unknown factor in multiplication. We are learning this so that we can multiply and divide fluently. That means with ease and correctly. We will use math in many real life situations. We will know that we are successful today when we can draw an array and a tape diagram and use those to write multiplication and division equations. What is a tape diagram? A tape diagram is a math model. A math model would be something like an array or a number bond. This is called a tape diagram. It uses boxes to represent the number of groups. We also call a tape diagram a bar diagram. So I may be calling it a bar diagram or a tape diagram. Your teacher could call it one of those things, but they're the same thing. So here's an example of a tape diagram. Each box tells how many are in one group. You'll see there's a bracket and a label. This tells me that one group has two in it. The whole tape diagram tells me how many in all. How many in all is also labeled at the bottom of the tape diagram. So I have one, two, three boxes with two in each box. Look at the array. What do the rows represent? What do the columns represent? I have one, two rows and one, two, three, four columns. Answer. The rows represent how many groups there are. So there are two rows or two groups. The columns are how many are in each group. So I have two rows with four in each group. How many are there in all? Eight, because four plus four is eight. That's how many in all. Notice I've labeled how many in all underneath the array using a bracket pointing to the number eight. Let's divide the array into equal groups of two in each group. So I know the total number is the first number and a division equation. And the number of groups is always the second number in a division equation. And after the equal sign is the quotient, and that tells me how many in each group. So in this case, the unknown is how many groups. How many groups divided by, or how many in all divided by the number of groups is two. And this is how I found out. I took my array, and I divided it into four boxes. That tells me how many in each group. There are four groups, and now I can see that there are two in each group. So eight divided by four equals two. Look at this array. What do the rows represent? What do the columns represent? Well, I have one, two, three rows, or three groups, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns, or seven in each row. Answer, the rows are how many groups? 
and the columns are how many in each group. How many in all? 21. We have three rows of seven, or seven times three is the same as three times seven, right? So we can count by three, seven times. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Or we can count by seven, three times. Seven, 14, 21. There are 21 in all. Let's divide the array into seven equal groups. Remember the sevens equal groups is the number of boxes in the tape diagram. We need seven boxes. So 21 divided by seven equals an unknown. And the unknown is how many in each group. Okay, so we've put boxes around each of the columns that tells us how many in one in how many groups so we have one two three four five six seven groups and one column is how many in one group so 21 divided by 7 equals 3 and I've labeled one column that tells me how many in each group I put a bracket and the number 3 and down at the bottom, I put a bracket across the whole tape diagram or bar diagram and pointed toward 21. There are 21 in all. So I have 21 divided by seven groups equals three in each group. Okay, it's time to put our skills to work with a read, draw, write question. So the read, draw, write question has three steps. We read it and find the important information. We draw a picture to help us solve the equation of uh, the problem. It could be an equation, it could be a math model, but today we're talking about tape diagrams. So we wanna make sure that we draw a tape diagram. And the third step is to write the answer as a complete sentence or more than one sentence. You want to use information from the question and describe how you arrived at your solution. So while I'm reading, I want to annotate or mark it up a little bit with important information. Normally, I want to look for numbers. So David has 12 socks in his drawer. 12 is important. How many pairs of socks can he make? Okay, thinking about the word pairs, this is a number word. Think about a pair of socks. How many are in a pair? That would be two. So he has 12 socks in his drawer, and the question is, how many pairs can he make? All right, model the problem with an array and a tape diagram. So the question is directing us to put it to use this strategy that we just used. I'm going to open a Jamboard, and if you are following along at home or at school, you can use a uh, pencil and paper, you can use a dry erase board, or if you have access to Google, you can go ahead and go to Google now. In the browser window, you're going to type jamboard.google.com. The link is in the description box below if you'd like to just copy and paste that link. You're going to press plus to open a new Jamboard and then click on the pen tool to select the pen. Now going back to the question, we want to be very precise about the information. David has 12 socks. How many pairs of socks can he make? Okay, so I know that there should be two in each group, right? for a total of 12. 12 is the number in all. So pairs of two, there's two, four, six, eight, 
10, 12. Okay, now I want to count my number of rows to find how many groups, right? One, two, three, four, five, six groups. That means my tape diagram has to have six boxes. and two in each box because that's the size of the group. So he has 12 socks in all. And one box equals a pair a pair. Okay. So let's try and make a division equation. So we want to start with our biggest number, the total. In a division equation, we always start with the largest number, and that's going to be 12. And how many pairs do we divide this into? One, two, three, four, five, six, six pairs. That's the number of groups equals how many in each group? That would be two, right? Two in each group. So 12 divided by six equals two. That's our division equation. Let's go back to our question and make sure that we have used all of the information that we need. David has 12 socks in his drawer. How many pairs of socks can he make? Model the problem with an array and a tape diagram. Okay, we've done all that. Now, the final step is to write the answer as a sentence. I want to use words from the question. So I wanna say something about David, his 12 socks, and how many pairs of socks he can make. So going back over here, I'm opening the sticky note, David can make six pairs of socks. I know this because 12 divided by six equals Save it, press cancel, and now I can make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. All right, so now we've drawn it and we've written a sentence with words and lots of juicy information for the reader. Imagine if your teacher was trying to read your work. She may not be able to follow exactly what you did because you just used the paper as you are using and thinking to yourself. But the written answer is the answer that your teacher will be looking for. She wants to see how you arrived at your solution. So you're, she wants to see how you arrived using numbers and math models. And then she wants you to explain to her or him how you arrived at the, question, at the answer to your question. All right, now let's go over, I've done my very best. Now let's go over to the presentation and see if my answer is correct. Answer, David can make six pairs of socks. There are two socks in a pair and six times two equals 12. So 12 divided by six equals two. So that's an example of an excellent answer and it has lots of good information and it pretty much matches what I said. Remember your answer doesn't have to equal or have the exact same wording as my answer. So when you're doing your own redraw rights, you're going to do the very best you can and that's all you can do. So let's move on. All right, so now it's your turn to do a redraw right on your own. And the way this works is that I will read it for you. You will go and draw it out on paper and pencil, using a dry erase board, or even a Google Jamboard if you have access to Google. 
And then you will write a sentence using words and complete sentences. You're going to use information from the question and you're going to describe exactly how you found your solution. And after you've done your very best, then you go to the description box below and you'll find the answer to the question. You can compare your sentences to my sentences. And remember, just do the very best you can. All right. Colton sorts bookmarks into stacks to give to the members of his book club. He has 21 bookmarks all together. He puts three bookmarks in each stack. How many stacks does he make? Draw an array and a tape diagram to solve. All right, it's your turn. Go do your very best and I will see you in the next video.